So today we're going to check out six knives that are just random. We're going to check them out. They're pretty cool knives. And we're going to start it off with the Wii Magnetron. Now we're going to go through these really fast. So the Wii Magnetron, I think that we did an amazing job on this. It, they, it feels like they did a little bit of extra on this knife. Not only the action and the blade and just you know, all the, it's all the little details that always really make a knife stand out, especially when they're at a high price. And I, I seen Metal Complex's overview on this and I truly don't feel like he gave it as much credit as it deserves. Now he didn't say anything bad about it, but I just feel like he could have gave it a little bit more credit. It has a beautiful 20 CV clip point with a hand satin finish, beautiful hand satin. Then it has really good geometry too. It's gonna cut like a champ. And this clip point blade, you can actually do utility cuts with it. So it's actually gonna work out really good for EDC and everything else a clip point works for. Fantastic ergos. This thing hand, is hand melting. Fin, um, the jimping is the exact type of jimping you want. You can choke up really comfortably. The access to the lock bar has this really nice texturing on it, very easy to disengage, super smooth. And then listen to that detent. You can hear that detent really suck the blade back in. And then with the deployment, the flipper tab is super comfortable and it's positioned perfectly. The distance away from the center of the pivot and then the height of it, when you break that detent, it kicks out with authority. Now, if you want, if you were going to fail this, you would have to really try because it's set up to not fail. As soon as all you got to do is just yank down on it and it's going to flip. And if you put any effort into it, it's going to flip with authority. So really, really good. And like I said, the little details, the way they did this inlay work, I'm normally not a fan of holes, but I actually really like these and the way they polished it. Titanium mill pocket clip and backspacer. And yeah, they, they just did such a good job. Now, now, if this is out of your price range, check out the Civivi Cinesis because it has, you know, some similarities with the blade shape and everything. This blade shape is actually going to be even a little bit better for EDC considering how low the tip is. 14C, 28N blade steel, nice and slicey, burlap micarta. It does come in different versions though. And then this is a steel frame lock. I know it has a steel lock bar insert, but the reason why that is is because this is going to be a little bit softer so that it's tougher and can take more, you know, more pressure while the steel lock bar insert is harder so you know it can uh, handle the wear going in and out underneath the blade fantastic action super snappy uh, very similar to the way the magnetron is the blade or sorry the, the flipper tab is nice and comfortable just breaking the detent it snaps out with authority it is slim though. This is a lot slimmer and you know, it's just a fantastic knife. This wasn't really part of the list, but I figured I'd add it anyway. Next is the Dark Bolt Designs Stratus. Now this also comes with a sheep's foot blade version. This one is the clip point or drop point blade with a beautiful satin finished hollow ground uh, blade. Nice and thin behind the edge, but it has somewhat of a robust blade. So it's going to be kind of the best of both worlds where it's robust and slicey at the same time. 20 CV blade steel. Now, where this thing is cool is it has a button lock and a liner lock. So you don't really see this too often. I know Spyderco's done it with their compression lock, but you basically you can push the button, which pushes the liner over. So it's a button lock. Or if you want to use it like a liner lock, you absolutely can. And they tuned the detent so good on this. I think we need to see uh, more locks like this because it makes it to where, at least on this example, or at least on the examples I have, the detent is perfect for all deployments, which in many cases is not easy for companies to do because while one, you know, like say a flipper tab, you might need a little bit stronger detent than you would on a front flipper or thumb studs. But in this case, they knocked it out of the park. Very comfortable ergonomics, titanium mill pocket clip. Now where the downside is, is the price. It is over $200 or right around, you know, 200, a little bit over, but it's steel liners. 
So, yeah, it's 20 CV, and, you know, it, it's really good. But, I, I man, I feel so much comfortable at about $160 or $150 than $200. But, like I said, you know, it's really, really good. They did a good job with it. Next is the Concept Warrior. The Concept Warrior is an S35VN titanium bolster lock. It does come in different handle materials. I like how they did, you know, the bolster lock so big. So, it's like 50 and 50 or 50% and 50%. So that's pretty cool. The The whole knife is kind of soft, and the S35VN blade is super thick. Very thick and robust. You're either going to hate that or love it, one of the two. Um, it's still going to cut just fine, but it's definitely not going to be a mega slicer. The tip is easy to get to. The lock bar is super soft. Very comfortable disengagement of the lock bar. And that, I got to give Concept credit, man. They, in, in a lot of cases, not all cases, but in a lot of cases, do a really good job with their lock bars and lock bar access and comfort of disengagement. But because the blade is so heavy, it drops like a guillotine. And when you open it up, just breaking the detent, it basically carries itself all the way open. Um, nice and comfortable in the hand. It's going to be pretty ergonomic for most people considering the shape of it. And it has a titanium mill pocket clip. Pretty damn cool. Let's get to the next one. Now, the next one is the Tactile Maverick. This is a USA made knife that I have an entire full review on doing all kinds of testing and everything else. We do an edge retention test and you know, you'll really hear uh, my full opinion on this knife. So definitely go and check it out. I also did a shop tour at Tactile. Anyways, Magna Cut Steel at 63 to 64 HRC and it did really good with its edge retention test. So go check that out. It has um, with, I think it's rich light micarta, but to me, it's just G10. Uh, I don't really see any resemblance to any sort of micarta here, and it's pretty flexible. However, they do have a titanium version that has the micro milling as well. So if you really, really like the lightweight feeling, then you might want this one. But if you want it to be a little bit more robust, check out the titanium one. I personally prefer the titanium one. Now, as far as the action goes, it's not as good as it could be. They did put washers on this. I wish they did bearings and the washers have the holes in them. So you can put like grease, you know, or your oil. And it does make it super glassy. Like it is very, very smooth. But, you know, it just, on the drop, it just feels like it could be a little bit better. Anyways, my biggest problem with it is the flex that I get from the scales. But like I said, they have the titanium one. And you know, like I said, if you want to hear my full perspective, go watch my full review. But either way, it's a USA made knife. It's pretty awesome. And like I said, they did a great job with the steel. Next is another USA made knife, the Hinderer Project X. Now, one thing that's cool about this knife is that back here, you got the heart, you got the, um, basically the bit driver. So you can pull this out. So you can pull this out and it has a little spring on it and that has everything on it that you need to take this knife apart. So really, really cool, even down to the little, the little hardware. So I think that's what that does. Maybe not, maybe we don't do, oh, that, oh for the, the clip. So pretty cool. So it's actually, it, it is the backspacer of the knife. Now, as far as the knife goes, Magna Cut Steel. Problem is, is it is soft magnet cut. 59 to 60 HRC. I wish that was higher. Um, I wish it was as higher, as high as the way Tactile did theirs, but it's not. It is what it is. It'll still hold a decent edge, but it's not going to hold an edge nowhere near the way it would if it was 63. So it's going to go dull as far as, you know, magnet cut goes. Pretty quick for magnet cut, but it's going to be really tough. Even though Magna Cut technically gets tougher the harder it gets, but then there's obviously a balance and a line of which, you know, that, that's not true. But as far as um, it goes, as far as I know, I'm not a heat treater, but Magna Cut supposedly gets stronger the harder it gets, but there's a cutoff line of which, you know, it starts going back. But clip point blade, beautiful clip point blade, very robust. Yeah, it actually is, you know, I think this thing would cut just fine considering how the ergos are. You can really get maximum leverage on this because it's so thick and robust, the handle. It's almost like you're holding a fixed blade. Good access to lock bar, very smooth. It does run on the triway pivot, so you can have it on bearings, washers, or Teflon. 
I have the bearings in there right now. Super snappy flipper deployment, the flipper tab. It is a little pokey on top, but you can kind of go from the back and push button it, and it works good. I love the titanium texturing or the texturing on the titanium. They do a good job with the clips. Love the massive hardware. Yes, it has every type of screw you could imagine. Um, so, you know, there is that, but I, I like the big robust hardware. So I got to give them credit for that. Let's put this little guy back on. Snaps right on there like that. So yeah, I like the knife a lot. I just wish it had harder HRC. I am gonna be probably testing it to verify its edge retention and everything, but we'll see how that goes. So far, I haven't even sharpened it yet, um, but it is ready for an edge because it did not come with the best edge angle. It was a very high edge angle, but I'm not mad at that because I usually resharpen my knives anyway, so. Next is another USA made knife, the Medford Swift. Now there are a lot of different options with this one. There is automatic versions, um, obviously flipper versions, non-flipper versions that only have the fuller Tonto versions, obviously draw point versions, different color options. So lots of flavors with this one. Now I gotta say that this is probably the best Medford I have in my collection as far as fit, finish, uh, tolerances, action, just everything goes. Now my favorite one is my Slim Midi, but this is even better than my Slim Midi as far as just how polished everything is and how well done it is. And because it's on bearings, this, <laughs> the action's really, really good. Like they tuned this really well for both deployments. And you know, with Medford, that wasn't always the case. They were known for being very stiff, you know, um, knives that had to break in over like a year or two, like knives that basically would last you a lifetime, but you know, they would take a long time to break in because they're on washers. Well, this comes right out of the box with amazing action. And you see the lock bar side is titanium. This is a lock bar stabilizer, so it's gonna help you from unspringing your lock. The show site is aluminum, but it also makes it to where they can do different colors and stuff. And they do a lot of different color options for the titanium as well. And it helps bring down the weight. Also something that's cool is the scales are also the backspacer. So the aluminum side is also the backspacer. So it's only two piece, a two piece construction. The titanium is nice and thick though. It does feel rather robust. And I actually like the way they did the lock bar access on this one because my Slim Midi, that's one of my biggest pet peeves, you know, and, and it's on my Slim Midi is the lock bar access is horrible. On here, it's really good. So, um, you know, I'm very happy with that. Also, you can flick it left-handed, even with your fingers on the lock bar. They just tuned it so good, and this fuller is nice and deep, so it's almost like using a hole because it is nice and deep, so it gives you a lot of leverage. This is a glass breaker right here. Now, they do come in different steels. This one's S35VN, and it does have internal stop pins right underneath the glass breaker. The finish on the blade, I love the way their finishes are. I absolutely think it's so gorgeous. It's almost like a satin polish. Like even their stone washes have like this. And I know it's something they've started doing only recently where it's like it's like nearly a polish, but it's like a stone wash polish. It looks so good. I love all the super large hardware. Very, very good hardware. And yeah, this is just this is a a great USA made knife. Now the downside. It is expensive. It is an expensive knife. It is a Medford. I also, you know, I wish it went thinner to, to, to slimmer and then a little bit thicker back here. But, you know, it's not, it's not bad. It's still pretty comfortable. You know, it's a great EDC knife, but man, it is expensive. However, it is USA made. These things have a lot of hand work done on them. And, you know, the heat treats, man, holy cow, they do a good job with their heat treat. I got to give Medford credit for that because they they have really really good heat treats you can you can really tell when you sharpen them up and you know just even over time using them you know how well they hold an edge and you know the way when you're sharpening them how they deburr and everything they they do really really good heat treats anyways there you guys go until next time peace